deeply low lowering ongoing lowering of standards i didn't think i thought that when rishi sunak came in you know we were going to have to you know hobble on until a general election but i didn't think he was going to be in a slightly more or in, in a slightly less obvious way pretty much the same as boris johnson when it comes to the things he can turn it well we've we've learned i think over the years he's good at turning a blind eye isn't he when he was when he was chancellor and now when he's prime minister or a deaf ear in this case uh, to lee anderson maybe he'll use his holiday as an excuse i was on holiday i was at disneyland with my girls i don't know what you're talking about it's all nonsense of course but i don't know i don't know what excuse he'll come up with but it's the only question i want to ask him between now and christendom frankly because um it, have we become that is that who we are now on the same day that number 10 puts out a big poster online saying Britain is still an open and tolerant country the deputy leader of the Conservative Party uses the kind of language a racist yob would shout across the street to someone that that's not exaggeration that's just fact what I've just described and I'm not going to keep saying what he said the, the, the deputy vice chairman, sorry, the vice chairman of, of the Labour Party, of the Conservative Party, has just used the language of a racist yob in the street. I, I don't actually believe his comments are particularly racist inherently, but it is the kind of language that a racist yob would use in the street. Um, they're rabble rousing. They're very ugly. They're deeply unprofessional. They're all of those things. Um, but I, I think nothing will happen. I think nothing will happen. And we, we went months and months and months and months and months with Boris Johnson openly lying to Parliament and outside Parliament and nothing happened. And then it eventually happened. But are we going to have to wait, what, another year and just accept quietly, calmly and try not to get depressed But while we have a government that just turns a deaf ear and a blind eye to that kind of behaviour, that kind of language and the damage that it does, what it, the permission it gives to other people Remember that speech that Meryl Streep made about Donald Trump when she said he, the, 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 the office he holds uh, should preclude him from doing any of the, saying any of the things he was saying about when he was mocking disabled people and being racist and goading Mexicans and, you know, you name it, he did it all. And she rightly made the point that that sends a message to other people that it's acceptable. And so does this. So does this dreadful comment from Lee Anderson. I, I mean, you know, you know it. You know it. Any adult knows it. Um, and yet I think Rishi Sunak will do nothing. And I think that tells me all of them, top to bottom, unfit for office. What does it tell you if nothing happens? Chris in Richmond. Hello, Chris. Hello, this is quite a personal thing. I feel quite upset about it. I do, I do. I mean, yesterday my wife becomes a British citizen. I've got a French friend who was kicked in the head in November 16 and told to F off back to France. He was in hospital for for, for hours and he couldn't work for two weeks. I, what has this country become? I just can't fathom it. I'm sorry, I'm emotional, but I am disgusted by this. I'm disgusted Absolutely by it disgusted. too. disgusted. I'm sorry, but don't, don't just... say sorry. Your response is normal, Chris. It is appalling. It's appalling. What happened to your friend? What what happened? Had he he or she come over? No, no. So he he was outside his house. It was fireworks day, and um, some yobs were throwing fireworks at his house. And so he had a. It was quite clearly French. He, you know, his, his accent was quite sort of pronounced, mm. and. Um, he said, well, you know, what on earth are you guys doing? And they kicked, his, kicked him in the head and said, why don't you F off back to France? God, is he all right now? Yeah, he's OK. Yeah, I haven't seen him for a, for a while, actually, because he's been down in Winchester. He's still living in my area down the road with big friends. And, mm. and I just, it's, this, this, is not, this is not the country I grew up in. No. It's not. You know, we can say all we like about diversity in the Conservative Party and the first Hindi Prime Minister. That's all great. But when the rubber hits the road, this is how we behave. And I agree with you, nothing will happen. Well, you see, I mean, Annette, sadly, there are always people who will shout those kinds of things. There are. But when the people at the very top green light it in the way that Lee Anderson and Rishi Sunak, if he doesn't sack him, are doing, I despair. I despair. Well, I agree. We, and we I are deeply no disapprove. 
<laughs> well, and I agree. And, and then the government has the cheek to complain about Gary Lineker and, and reference to 1930s Germany. Tell me the difference. Oh, I Tell think, me the difference. Just, well, I think there's a big difference. <laughs> I think there's a big difference. One was making an argument that perhaps wasn't uh, as as well made as he as he might have thought. The other is shouting abuse at people. <laughs> two two very different things. But Chris, thank you, thank you very much indeed. And I understand your emotion about the subject. I really do. Uh, Richard has called from Sydonia. Hello, Richard. Hi, uh, Sheila. How are you? I'm fine. Okay, I guess uh, just one question: Why we never discuss our own indigenous homeless people that are struggling? We do. Uh, they're not offered hotels at barges. They're not offered three meals a day. They're not offered leisure facilities. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm sympathetic to immigrants, but we can't house the world. I mean, where does it stop? Everyone suffers if, if everyone can come here. The infrastructure Nobody's, will be destroyed. Like, I can't stress how many times I say this isn't about saying everybody can come here. Are you saying, Richard, that we press pause on any immigration until there are no rough sleepers? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that, but let's discuss about our own people that are really We do, all the time. We do, all the time. But then they're not offered hotel accommodation, are they? Like the they are. Sort of. Homeless people are, sadly, offered temporary hotel accommodation and B&Bs. They are, and hostels. They are. Okay, yeah, it's just like uh, I was brought up. I was always taught charity begins at home, and then after that, you can help as many people as possible. So you That's are suggesting we stop I'm immigration not, not before we fix everybody's Don't life. Don't get me yeah. wrong. But, but, but what you keep saying suggests that you think it's one and then the other. I think it's our own indigenous people that should come first. That's what I'm saying. But what does that mean? It in means the people that were born in the UK and are really struggling, we should help them and then try and help as many immigrants as so, possible. So you are saying pause all immigration until everybody who was born here is OK well, until we and can housed? until we out because the numbers coming in now are unsustainable. So, so you are saying that? I'm saying that the numbers are unsustainable and everyone suffers. Are they unsustainable? Well, over 500 a day. What do you think? Well, it depends what we do with people, isn't it? Well, and what we do with housing do policy and what we do with employment. Dentist appointments. I mean, the system it's is... Not, it's not. I, I, it, it, I won't carry on, Richard, because you'll just keep repeating things that aren't true. It, it, isn't, it isn't the new arrivals that are overwhelming the doctor's surgeries. It's the lack of doctors. It's the lack of GPs. And it's the lack of nurses and it's the lack of other healthcare professionals that means the system was already at breaking point. And then COVID, of course, happened. It isn't immigration. I'm, I'm not saying that the increasing uh, migration that we're seeing of asylum seekers and some illegal migrants as well. I'm not saying that that isn't a problem. Of course, it's a problem. It's a problem for many of them as much as it's a problem for us. It's it's not about saying, hey, relax, let anybody in. And I, I get tired of having to say that because, of course, nobody thinks that apart from the odd, and I mean very odd, uh, sort of extreme, you know, there are no such things as nation states type characters. There are such things as nation states. And we can say what we do about immigration and 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 illegal and legal and asylum. You know, we can and we do. We've just got a broken system. You'll never guess who broke it, Richard. Lee Anderson's mates.